I say all the time one of the most important things for anyone nowadays, I don't care if you're old or young or you're employed, unemployed, is to have a website and to have your own email server. Um, it's never been cheaper and easier to do it. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. In this video, I'm just going to set up a web server where you can have a website, in fact, a number of websites, uh, but also an email server, just because I know there are a lot of people who are always looking for, you know, ways to of stop using Google or, or something else. Um, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. I've done videos on uh, setting up a web server or, um, uh, you know, doing an email server in separate videos before. I want to do it all in one sitting here. Um, and also add in some improvements, I guess, uh, and some additional stuff. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, well, I should put it this way. You need two things if you want to have a website, okay? Firstly, you need a domain name, okay? Um, so to get a domain name, you can go to any uh, domain registrar. There are a million of them. The one that I use is Epic. Epic is very nice. I'll put a link uh, below. Um, you can also, usually you um, you get a domain name and every year you pay a fee to the ICANN, which is like between usually 10 to $12. So it's not very much. It's basically a dollar a month, right? Um, uh, at Epic, you can actually reserve a domain forever. It costs a lot of money. I mean, it costs a couple hundred bucks, but you can do that if you want, if you don't want to have to worry about renewing it or anything. I mean, you can have it automatically renew anyway, but um, uh, I do recommend uh, Epic. So you need a domain name and you also need somewhere to host your website, okay? So that could be a server in your house, but a lot of people don't have an extra computer hooked up to their power and their internet that they want people accessing all the time. Um, so what's pretty common nowadays is you can get virtual storage online. Um, so I have, well, this is the company I use. I use Vulture. It's the one I'm going to be setting it up with in this video. Um, basically, you can just rent for a couple bucks a month. I think it's like $3 a month. You can get uh, a server where you can host your files, your website, your email, like all the, stu all the stuff you need. Bas so basically every year you end up spending, you know, 60, maybe 70 bucks uh, a, a year to pay for this whole website where you can have multiple websites. And even if you're just putting like your CV up or basic information or just links to stuff you like, um, it's professional to have your own website and email server. Frankly, it's a good investment, even if you don't know what you're going to do. You don't want to become internet famous or something like that. Um, anyway, so check out the link to Vulture below. I, actually, the link to Vulture, that's an affiliate link that is unironically a total steal because you get like uh, $100 of free credit the first month to play around. And then if you stay on, like I get a cut of like your first payments or something like that. It's, it's extremely generous. We're ripping them off. Click on at least click on the Vulture link. Um, anyway, so here's what I've done. On Epic, I've actually reserved this uh, domain name here. Uh, it is landchad.net because that's what you're going to be. You're going to be a, a internet landchad. Um, so that's the domain that I'm going to be using, setting up a, a website and uh, email with. Um, and on Vulture, just start an account here. Um, again, links to these both below. And uh, we'll go ahead and start with Vulture, okay? First thing you want to do is you want to deploy a server. You can just click on the big blue thing and deploy one. Um, it doesn't, uh, you, you ha they give you a lot of choices. Don't get too overwhelmed by them. Um, it doesn't really matter that much where your server is. Uh, I, I guess closer to where you think you're going to have a lot of traffic. I usually pick New York. Um, for the operating system, I'm going to be using Debian 10. Um, you can probably get away with Debian 9 or Ubuntu following these directions, but there might be a couple other things you have to do. I'm going to be using Debian 10, and the script that I'm going to use to set up the email server is assuming that you're using Debian 10, although I think it does work on an Ubuntu, but anyhow, it's not important. Um, as for the server size, so here's the thing. You see a whole bunch of options here. Oh, you could pay 160 bucks a month to get all this storage space and all this bandwidth. Don't even bother. Get the cheapest one, okay? Get the 350 one. Well, don't get the one that's IPv6 only. You, you don't want that, but get the cheapest one that's not IPv6 only, okay? Uh, it, it does not take that much storage, storage space or um, bandwidth or, or memory to run a simple website and a web server or a, a email server. So don't, don't look for anything complicated, okay? Um, 
And then down here, although I said don't get the IPv6 only thing, we do want to enable IPv6. Um, and that's just because as the web has gone on, people are using IPv6, uh, uh, you know, IP addresses more. Um, you'll you'll want to set that up, okay? You want to be you want to have a future-proof website, right? If you don't know what that means, you know what IPv4, IPv6 is. It doesn't matter, but we'll set it up but set it up in just a second. Um, last, you can go ahead and set a name uh, for your uh, your the server you're setting up. I'm just gonna give it uh, the uh, domain name that I have. I think it's .net, isn't it? Yeah, .net. Um, and then I'm just going to say deploy now. So that is going to take maybe a minute or so to set up. Now in the meantime, the thing that we really need to do, so we have this domain name here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to DNS host records with that. DNS host records. So the important thing on your registrar is you want to set it up so... Um, okay, well I should explain what DNS is. When you type in a, a, a web address like whatever.com, um, what your browser or you know what this what the internet basically does is it looks to a DNS server and a DNS server more or less has rules for if I see this domain name, what server IP am I going to look to? Okay, so what we want to do is tell uh, put in records that will link this domain to our IP address. Um, now our server should be about done setting up. Let, let's click on it and see what happens. Um, okay, so good. We already have an IP address so we can get started. I'm going to copy this IP address and I'm going to go to the Epic uh, tab again. Um, so you're going to want to go to the A records, the external host A records. They have some stuff already filled out here. Uh, you can just delete that. Actually, I'm deleting it, but I'm just going to add stuff that's nearly identical. Um, so you are, go albeit with a different IP address, of course. So uh, for your first A record, you're going to leave this blank and you're going to paste in your IP, okay? And that is just going to direct, if someone puts in lanchad.net, it's going to go to that IP address. It's going to tell you, look at that server, and then the server, if you have a web server, it, you know, things are going to be displayed, okay? Um, additionally, you're going to want to redirect www, um, and so this will redirect www.lanchad to that IP address. And additionally, you're going to want to put in uh, a wildcard entry. And what this means is if someone types in like uh, blog dot whatever or mail dot whatever, we'll need this for the mail address, they're all going to go to the same place, okay? They're all going to this. This entry, like for any possible subdomain you make, it's going to redirect it there. Um, now, we're not done with these. We actually, these are IPv4 addresses. We also, if you go to, um, again, your server here, if you go to settings and then IPv6, this ugly looking thing here, that's your IPv6 uh, address, okay? So we're gonna wanna put in records for that as well. So we can go back here, say add a record. This time on this little drop down menu, select the AAAA record, the quad A record. And in that case, put in your IPv6 address and just do the same thing. So we want www. Uh, put in this, uh, put it to AAAA, and then uh, the star AAAA, uh, oops. Um, so once you put those in, uh, there's one other thing we want to add here. Go to the mail services over here, and you're going to want to put in a record for, uh, let's say, priority 10. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, and point this to mail dot landchad.net or whatever your domain is okay now this is like for dealing with when we set up the mail server you're just going to need this the important thing here is make on epic at least make sure to have a trailing uh, period here um, now once you have this done once you have all six of these a and aaa records in and your mx record go ahead and save it and that is going to update and we'll be able to access once the dns records propagate we'll be able to access our server um, so, how do we do that exactly? Uh, well, we use it, we access it using SSH, which is a nice little command line utility. What we can do at any time is just type in SSH, and then we can say root, because we want to log in as root, and you can put in the uh, address you want to go to, okay? Now, they give you, uh, let me get rid of this. They give you here a password, and we'll show our password here. And that's a good looking password. I mean, no one's gonna randomly guess that, right? Um, so I'm gonna copy this, and we'll just test it out to make sure it works. 
I'm gonna log into this. It's gonna ask, oh, here's a new fingerprint. Do you wanna remember this? I'll just say yes. Put in your password. Uh, okay, so now we're in the server, right? And I'm gonna press Control D. I'm actually gonna exit the server because I'm gonna do something else first. Um, so that we, we logged into our server successfully. Um, but what I really want is I wanna be able to secure it. So, he, well, here's what I want. Firstly, I don't wanna have to put in my password every time I SSH into my server. Additionally, I, hypothetically, if someone guesses my password or if someone sees that it's right here and you're watching this video, um, I don't want you to be able to log into this, uh, this server. Um, so there's a very secure way of actually securing any server and that is with SSA or with GPG, okay? If you don't have a GPG uh, key pair, just run this, GPG full gen key. And what this does is it generates what's called a key pair uh, that can identify you, it can identify this machine, so that whenever you try to log, you can tell your server, hey, if I try to log in with this key, let me in. Or if I put this key on another computer, let me log in with this computer. Uh, and then we can say, just don't accept anyone who you know puts in the, the password, don't accept any passwords, basically. It's a more secure way of uh, keeping your server safe. Uh, so if you've never, if you don't have a GPG key pair, run this command. It'll give you directions for creating it. Just, you know, say yes and go through all the stuff. Um, but once we have that, we can run this. We can run SSH copy ID and then again root at our um, domain here. And it this, what it's going to do is it's going to log in. I'm going to give the password. I think I still have it on my clipboard. Um, yeah, so it is going to, uh, you give it the password, and what that does is it actually takes your GPG key pair and tells the server, hey, let this guy log in without using a password. Okay, that's me. Trust this key when you see it. So now what we can do, okay, we can run this original SSH command again, um, and this time if we run it, it's not going to ask us for a password because it sees, oh, you have that GPG key pair that I recognize, oh, I can trust you, all right? Um, now, now that we've done that, let's actually secure our server uh, because you know all you guys know my password, so I don't want you logging into this uh, this server here. So what we can do is I'm going to use a text. You can use whatever text editor you know how to use. I'm going to use Vim. If you don't know how to use Vim, use Nano. Uh, you know because Vim isn't you know you got to know how to use Vim to use it. Uh, but let's edit the file Etsy slash ssh slash sshd uh, underscore config. Okay, so SSH, you know, again, is this, this service that allows you to log into computers and stuff remotely. Um, now I'm gonna search for Pam. There should be a line that's like Pam's, yeah, okay. See this line right here is use Pam. We wanna change that from yes to no. And then there's another line that should be, yeah, password authentication. This is commented out, uncomment that, and then change that to no. Um, so what those two settings are going to do is once we refresh SSH uh, it, or SSH the daemon, uh, it is going to not, even if you give it the right password, it's not going to let you log in. The only people who can log in are people who have been approved, who have a GPG key pair uh, that we just, or the, an approved GPG key pair, like the one we just have. So to, to refresh that, to make that config uh, current, just run systemctl reload sshd. So now, even if someone knows uh, your password, because they saw it in a YouTube video, you will not be able to log into, they will not be able to log into your server. Uh, now you guys remember last time I did one of these videos, I did that as a flex, except for I edited the wrong file. It was actually pretty cringe, but because uh, there's a SSH underscore config, but the one you need is SSHD underscore config, but whatever. Who cares? So now let's actually start setting up this uh, web server. Well, we'll do some general stuff first. Uh, first, we'll run apt update just to update our packages. We'll see if there are any uh, that need to be upgraded. It says four packages can be upgraded. So I'm going to run apt upgrade and upgrade those. Okay, just to make sure we got new stuff, uh, the newest and, and best software. So uh, now we're gonna wanna, well, actually before I even install stuff, I'm going to, um, uh, again, use a text editor. You can use Nano if you don't know how to use Vim. I'm gonna edit the bash RC in this server. I, I just, you know, wanna uh, clean some stuff up in here. So they give you some settings you can uncomment here. If you wanna add colors and some aliases, you will probably want these three at the bottom because they make uh, commands like remove and copy safer by 
uh, forcing the eye option. Um, and I'm gonna add some other stuff in here as well. Like I like vi uh, VI mode in the shell, so I'm gonna set that. And then also I'm gonna set some more aliases. Uh, one command that you're gonna use all the time is uh, on a server is systemctl. Uh, I always find that is too much typing, so I'm gonna alias s to systemctl. So now if I type s, it's just gonna run systemctl, so I don't have to type all that out. And also j, I'm gonna have that as a shortcut for journal ctl x x e so that and that's gonna show you if you're like troubleshooting something this command shows you your logs so you can see if there's some kind of error um, so I'm gonna save that file and now I am going to source it so it's active okay so uh, and that should give me oops that should give me colors and stuff okay so yeah I have colors and uh, yeah s does system ctl that's nice okay so now let's actually install this stuff. Um, we will want to apt install the following packages. We are going to want Nginx. Nginx is what we're going to use as a web server. Um, and we're going to use Python cert bot Nginx. This is the thing that's going to give you HTTPS on your website. It's going to give you a, uh, you know, a encrypted connection so people connecting to your website, if they're using passwords, they're safe, like if you're having your mail server. Uh, you also just want this in general for a million different reasons, like, uh, you know, ISPs can't look at what pages people are looking at, adds a little security, you know, there are a bunch of little things it does. So you'll want that. And I'm also going to install rsync because I'm going to show you how to... Uh, you know, usually what I do is uh, if, when I'm designing a website or I have my own website, I actually keep all the website source files offline on my, com my laptop or something. And I use rsync to sync that with uh, my server. So I'm going to install that because it needs to be installed on the receiving server. Um, that's just going to take a second. Um, well, we'll see. I might have to... No, it's, it's going quick enough that I don't have to stop it. I'm trying to think if there's something else I need to do in the meantime. Um, so I will say on Epic, um, we will be putting in some text records here, uh, at the very end of the video, so you might want to keep that tab open. I think we're, oh, there's one thing I forgot. Okay, there's one thing I, I totally forgot about that we need to do. Uh, glad I checked here. Uh, go back to settings and IPv6, um, and you want to take your IPv6 address here, and you want to make a reverse DNS record down here. So just copy that in there, and for the reverse DNS, just put in your, uh, I'm going to put landchad.net, whatever your domain name is, and say add. Yeah, I'm glad I remembered that now rather than later, because uh, that, that's required for setting up everything with the email server. Um, so yeah, make sure you do that. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's done. Perfect. Perfect timing. Um, so uh, let's talk about how Nginx works. So Nginx... Uh, again, it's going to be your web server. Actually, we can go ahead, we can go to landchad.net, and we should have this little Nginx. Uh, oh, yep, it says, welcome to Nginx. Um, now, how it usually works on Debian is the config files are in Etsy Nginx. Specifically, what, what you really typically do is in sites available, uh, that is where they have, you put all the different sites that you have configuration files with. Uh, there's a default file in here. Um, and then once you, uh, once you want to activate those, you symlink those files to uh, the, the directory sites enabled. Okay, that's usually how it works. We'll just do it step by step, okay? Um, so I am going to, actually I'll copy this default file, and I'm going to copy it into the same directory, uh, but I'm going to rename it, uh, sites available, uh, we'll just say um, landchad. Okay, because that we're gonna. This is going to be the site configuration. If someone clicks, or if someone just goes directly to the website, I don't want this appearing. I want, uh, you know, I want some other website that I configure to be, uh, to be there. So that's what I'm gonna change this to. So I'm gonna open up this new file, Landchad, uh, and you'll see it has a whole bunch of comments and stuff. I don't like comments. Let me get rid of comments with Vim. Uh, go. Uh, to yeah, uh, just some Vim magic here. That's what I'm doing. Uh, okay, yeah. So I just got rid of all those comments. Just clean up and cleaning up the file. Um, so here's what you're gonna want to change in this file. Firstly, um, get rid of default server here. You don't want that. Um, and replace that. Don't. I mean, keep the semicolon at the end. Uh, but get rid of default server. Now this line here, root. 
This is where you tell Nginx uh, where you are going to put the files for your um, for your web server. Okay. By default, this little site that came up here, this little default site is automatically generated in the directory var www.html or slash html. Okay. I'm going to change that. I'm going to say you know landchad or something like that. Um, and then this line can stay the same. Server name, put in your domain name, landchad.net, and then www.landchad.net, okay? So uh, once we have that, we basically have everything we need here. So I'm gonna exit, uh, save and exit that file. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm gonna make it sort of a dummy configuration. This is gonna make things easier when I do the email server. I'm actually gonna copy that, that file into another file called mail, um, and I'm gonna edit that file. Let me go in here for a second. Uh, for root, you don't really need to change this. You can if you want. I mean, if you wanna add something, some landing directory for that. Uh, but I'm gonna change the server name to mail.landchad.net and www.mail. .landchad.net. That's the only thing I'm going to change in this file. Okay. So now we have a, a configuration file for our main website, and we have a configuration file for our mail subdomain. Uh, I'm going to link both of those, uh, and that is this is to activate them. You want to link those files, which are in the sites available directory. You want to link them into the sites enabled directory. Okay. So now that one is going to be enabled. Next time you uh, refresh Nginx. And now we'll change, we'll do the same thing with mail. Um, now to refresh Nginx, you run uh, system CTL reload Nginx. Uh, I actually alias system CTL to S, so I can just type that. Uh, but that is gonna reload it. Okay, so now what that's gonna do is, if we go back here to our website and try and load it again, it's actually gonna say 404 not found. Well, that's because we changed the directory that it's looking at. If we go back, let's go back. Uh, we changed its root directory to var slash or var www landchad, and that directory doesn't exist. Let's actually make it up. Uh, landchad. Now that directory exists. Let's make a file in it. Um, landchad uh, and index.html is usually the landing page. So this is a landchad site. Uh, Actually, maybe I should, land chat is a big, big word, so let's make it all caps. Uh, here is some HTML, so you can basically, uh, this is your website, okay? So if we go back here, reload it, oh look, that, that file, or yeah, that file we were just editing, it is our website. So now what you can actually do is um, you can, uh, you can build your website online or offline and you can upload it to this location. Whatever is at this directory var www.landchad, that is going to be your website. Now we're not done. Don't turn off the video if that's what you're going to do. Uh, cause we gotta, we gotta give, uh, the site HTTPS. Uh, but I will say this is how I usually, uh, I think I have a little example file here. Okay. Uh, our sync is, yeah. Okay. So this is usually how I, um, uh, up, update and, uh, uh, excuse me, update a website. Okay. I use an rsync command specifically. Let's say I have a web, you know, I have a little directory here called website in my home directory. Uh, so here is, uh, you know, just some stuff that I put in it. Uh, what I can do is I can run a command like this. I can say rsync. Uh, I'm actually going to omit the U there because, uh, for reasons, um, but I can do something like I can run rsync, and again, this is on my local computer, and upload that to landchad.net, given give it the location that I'm putting it at, uh, and what that will do is it will just upload the entire directory, whatever I put in. And right now, I just have one file, but you can make your website or whatever, and that's going to update it. And if we go over here, uh, this should. It should be updated, or do I need a? Yeah, I think I need to put a trailing. Uh, let's see if that works. Yeah, I think that's it. Yes. Uh, yeah, you, rsync is picky about if you have a trailing um, slash or whatever. Um, but that that kind of command, it will update. It will. You can upload whatever file, so you can work on your website offline. Then you just run a command like this. You put it in a script or in an alias, 
and you can use that to update your website. Anyway, so let's uh, do some other really important things. I said you really want HTTPS, and today, nowadays, it is so easy to get. It used to be a big pain, if, especially if you have like host, you, if you had old school hosting, you'd have to basically pay for it. But there's this great project called CertBot, uh, which makes it so easy to do. Uh, it's, it's fantastic how, I don't know, great and easy it is. So as I said, we installed earlier uh, this uh, package called Python hyphen certbot hyphen nginx. Now we can run certbot. And what this is gonna do is it's basically just gonna set up HTTPS. Uh, first it'll ask for your email address. This is just to email you when, um, you know, when it has to be renewed or whatever. Uh, you can set it up to auto renew too. Um, ask for terms of service. And they also ask if you wanna give them your email. I'm gonna say no, but you know, whatever. Uh, and then it'll ask which website, which domain do you want to have HTTPS for? I'm gonna just press enter because that means choose all. Uh, and it's gonna make a HTTPS uh, or a, a certificate for all of those websites. Uh, it's gonna take just a little second, okay? And at the end, it's gonna say, do you wanna redirect these sites? Um, and you're gonna wanna definitely say yes, and that is number two, okay? Um, and now what's gonna happen, so, so I'll show you what that did on the server side. Um, if you look at those Nginx files that we were editing uh, a little bit ago, like sites available, uh, Landchad, uh, it actually added all this stuff here, um, all this kind of stuff. Uh, it's actually, yeah, it, it's actually good that it does this. Uh, you used to have to do it manually, but um, so it gets a certificate and it automatically fills in Nginx, uh, Nginx's uh, config files with the things you need. Now, if we go back here, before it said not secure on our website. If we reload that website, oh look at that, now there's a little lock sign, our connection is secure. So that does a million different things in addition to you know making you higher in search results and stuff like that. Um, you know, it makes it so if people are accessing your website, ISPs and other people can't just modif can't just watch every single page they go to. They can only see that they have an encrypted connection to your website. Um, and there, well, especially when we set up a mail server in a second, which, oh, actually not a second, we're basically gonna do that now. Um, yeah, you're gonna want that for a mail server as well. Uh, okay, so how do you set up a mail server? Um, here is the easiest way to do it. I have a script that does it automatically. And uh, if you wanna see what the script runs, you can look at it yourself, but I'm gonna download this script using CURL. I keep it at lukesmith.xyz slash email whiz dot sh uh, and run that with the L and the O options, capital L and capital O. And that is gonna download a little script, okay? Um, and it has some documentation. You can read it and look at what it actually does. Um, but it basically sets up a postfix and dovecot server. Uh, and that's what we're gonna wanna do. It installs spam assassin and all these other things. Uh, so I'm just gonna run it and I'll explain it while it runs cause it'll take a little bit of time. Uh, just press okay on the first thing, say internet site. Uh, and then here, uh, change the system mail name to your domain name. So landchad.net, okay? So that's gonna take a little bit to set up. That is installing Dovecot. Dovecot is like what you connect to, uh, you know, to download your mail or whatever. Postfix is the thing that sends your mail. It installs both of them and mutually configures them. It installs Spam Assassin. Uh, that can blocks it blocks a lot of spam by default, and you can also edit it to get more fine grain control. Uh, it also sets up DKIM uh, and a, a lot of other things. Now, what DKIM is? It's a, a service for basically um, uh, validating your emails. Uh, you know, if you send to like Google or these other enterprise accounts or something like that, uh, they have higher stand, like they want more verification that the email is actually coming from who, you know, it says it's coming from. So DK DKIM is a way of validating that kind of email uh, and stuff. Um, I will just say that, yeah, that's something you definitely want to configure if you have an email server. Otherwise, it's just going to be, you know, your mail is going to be considered spam. Now this is gonna finish in just a split second. And it, the last thing you're gonna wanna do is you can go ahead and go to Epic. Uh oh, actually it's already pulled up, but on your domain name, landchad.net, go to your text records and we're gonna put in some text records. It's gonna give us some in just a moment, uh, I think. 
I don't want to have to stop the video. I know that it's like, it's literally right. Okay, there it is. All right, great. All right. So this stuff in green, it give it tells you what you need to do. Um, it, all this stuff in green, we're going to add it to Epic's site. Uh, and then we'll basically be done setting up this uh, web ser or this email server. Um, there, all this data is also stored in this little file, if you want to just open that file. Uh, but I'm just going to copy it directly from here. Uh, firstly, I'll copy this thingy. Okay. So uh, notice that there are three records here. There's one, this really long one. There's this one here. And then there's this one here. Okay. So I'm going to take this record here, copy that. And it goes with uh, at. Uh, so you're going to say the host is at. Text value is that. Uh, add another record. Um, that is going to be, let's move my face. Um, I'm going to copy all of this junk. Okay, and that is going to be at uh, underscore dmark. Underscore dmark. I don't think you need to include the dot and then the rest of it. I don't think, I'm not quite sure. I'll. I'll double check that. I'm doing this live. I'll test it live. But last time I did it, I feel like Epic automatically fills in uh, the rest of your domain. Um, so for this other one, this one's a lot bigger. Just make sure you copy it all. Uh, and I'm going to copy this. Uh, going to omit the domain as well. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure you don't need the domain itself on Epic. You do if you're putting this in. If you have your own DNS server, you got to put them. Put these entries in as they appear. Uh, but okay, I'm pretty sure that's gonna work. Um, okay, so the last thing we want to do, our email server should be up and running now, but we actually need accounts on our email server. So how I have this email server work is um, if you have a user account on your server and that user is a member of the mail group, then they have an email account. So let's create a user and add him to the mail group. So we can say user add, um, give it the capital G, uh, and that's going to mean uh, add it to the group mail. Uh, give it the M option. The M option is super important. That just creates a directory, a, like a user directory for this, uh, this uh, email account. And that's where the mail is going to be stored. And then we'll name the account, let's say, I, I don't know, Chad. Okay. So now there's a user called Chad that exists on the server. Uh, let's, we need, in order to log in, we got to give him a password. So let's give Chad a password. Uh, I'm just going to uh, type in whatever, uh, type in some old, old password that I don't use anymore. Uh, okay, so now we have a password for that. Now what I'm going to do is I actually install just for this purpose, I installed Thunderbird. So I'm going to pull Thunderbird up. Um, now you can choose, you can use whatever um, email client you want. Um, uh, Thunderbird is nice if you want a graphical user interface. Uh, you can check out my Mutt Wizard. I will put links to that below. Um, that if you want something on the command line. If you're using Android, I recommend K9. Uh, but really, any email client should work. Uh, so your name, we'll say the guy's name is Chad. Email address is going to be chad at landchad.net. And my password, uh, what was the password? Yeah, this one. Wait, no. Uh, you know, I really take a lot of pride in the passwords I create. Like I wish I could share my algorithm for creating passwords because they're very memorable, but I think they're also like, you know, no one would guess them. All right. Um, so you also, you're probably going to want to actually, let's just press continue and see what happens. We'll probably have to configure it manually. Um, cause it won't be able to guess. Uh, yeah, I don't think it is. Uh, I'm not going to, but wait, let's see. Let's, con let's configure it manually. Okay, so here's what you're going to want to do. You are going to want for the SSL, pick SSL, and it should be 993 here. And for this, I think I have start TLS, don't I? Uh, yeah, I have start TLS on this. So, okay. So the IMAP, that means basically downloading your mail. Um, have that be SSL, and the port should be 993. That should be automatic. And then for the SMTP, that means sending mail. Um, that should stay as start TLS, uh, and uh, let's see, the yeah, the port should be 587. That's the normal one. Let's retest that. Thunderbird for... Oh, oh, stupid me. Sorry, I forgot about the most important part. The server is not IMAP and SMTP. Change that to mail. Yeah, sorry, forgot about that one too. Uh, 
Okay, yeah. So that should work. We'll say uh, done. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, skip this. Okay. So firstly, let's. You'll see actually it's successful because it's loading all of our mailboxes here. I am going to send. I'm gonna send a mail to my main address. Okay. So uh, just to see if that we can send mail and stuff. This is an email. Uh, from Chad, your bud, okay, lol, um, I, I just put lol because there's, spam assassin is actually uh, more likely to count it as spam if, spam if there's only one line, so I'm going to send that, and I'm also going to send a message, let's send a message to, uh, uh, shoot, who should I, uh, yeah, I'm going to send it to a Gmail account too, because I want to see if Gmail is going to work right off the bat. Now, here's um, one fact of life. A lot of times, if you just start, uh, if you just order a domain name, a lot of times it will be automatically listed as, it, listed as a spam address. So I don't know, you know, will this go to Gmail? Will this go to Gmail? Let's find out. Let's find out. Uh, best chat. Okay. Um, so I am going to go check both of these email addresses and we'll see what goes through. All right, so now I've pulled up my email. I did successfully get this email from, uh, you know, in my main uh, account. Um, but I went to Gmail and actually this email went straight to spam. Um, and in fact, I sent another email that was a little longer just to see if it wasn't, you know, uh, just the length. And again, as I said, sometimes Gmail or other accounts, they'll automatically, if they see a new new domain, they'll probably mark it as spam. Uh, as time goes on, that won't happen. Like, uh, you know, if the domain has been registered for more than a week or so, uh, it'll get better, basically. But let's. there are a couple other things you can do to test your mail service. Uh, I'm going to put links to these below. Again, the script that I have called Email Wiz. Uh, in its readme, I link to a couple things like this thing, a DKIM test. Now we put in those DKIM entries a second ago. Let's actually make sure that that's not our problem, uh, just in case. Uh, so what it's going to ask us to do is it's going to give us a little mail address here. I'm going to copy that email address. And I'm going to go to um, our Thunderbird where we have our email account. And I'm going to send it to that, uh, that exact address. It doesn't matter what you send, but it is going to test your email, uh, it's gonna test your email. It'll come up here in just one second and it'll tell you if something's wrong with the DKIM signature. Let's see what happens. Okay, pass, 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 that's great. Okay, everything is actually perfect. Uh, we've put pretty much everything in here. Um, we do have this thing down here, RBL, uh, 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 RBL. So what this means is, um, you know, we might be on some kind of list. This domain might have all, or it might be your IP address uh, has been put on one of these lists or something like that as, you know, maybe the person who used to own your IP was sending out spam or something like that. So we can actually look at this list. Uh, let's see what this site is actually like. Uh, drone BL. See, these sites are basically monitors of like who's sending out spam or stuff like that. Um, let's see. Are you listed in, I don't know, you, in your case, if you have problems, it, uh, it looks like here you can submit your IP address and get it removed from the list or something like that, but uh, it might be a little different in each case. Either way, this little tool will, will sort of tell you what might have gone wrong with your email, but looks like all of the, the stuff setting in our settings uh, is good. Um, I, I don't know, I might just uh, submit my IP address to that in a bit. Um, additionally, um, there are some other links that, again, will be below uh, if you want to check your uh, email uh, or your domain name to see if it's going to be on a spam list or a blacklist. I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. It's going to take us. Let's see. Yeah, see, look, it, same thing came up. Drone BL. Um, yeah, it looks like our, we just got unlucky when I got an IP address. Um, I guess I'll have to, uh, you know, get them, get it removed by them or something like that. But I'm going to put Lanchad net in here just as well. This is a DNS tester. Just to make sure we put in all of our entries right. Uh, oh yeah, you know, I haven't actually uh, received mail, have I? Let, let me, uh, let's see. Um, let's reply to this mail, actually. Um, here is a mail uh, in reply. Okay. So 
I'm going to send that. Yep. Okay, so that's going to send. Oh, look at that. So I can receive mail as well. Right. So our SMTP server and our Dovecot server uh, are working out. Okay, let's see if there's anything wrong with our DN. Uh, I don't see any scary red X's, so that looks good. So it looks like I put in everything right in the DNS uh, records. So yes, apparently you don't have to put in the full domain. Um, so that seems, I think we did a whole lot in that video, but uh, it, when it comes down to it, you now should have a website and you should have a an email address. Again, there are little hurdles you will run over. Um, I, I might just go ahead and uh, do this in a second. Um, but I will say, let's talk about if you want to have other uh, subdomains, okay? That's one thing that I think, um, you know, we'll go ahead and put this in. I, I could do this as another video, but I think it's worth uh, doing now. Let's say hypothetically, you want to have another subdomain. Let's say you want blog.lanchad.net or something like that. All right, so what we can do for that is, um, you know, so again, if we look at Nginx, we have these available sites. Well, we can make a new one. Let's make a new one. Uh, let's take the old LandChad configuration, and we'll copy that. Let's say we want to have the LandChad blog, okay? So I'm going to copy that there, and we're going to go to that. And, uh, oh, actually, you know, we might not want this Nginx stuff. Uh, I don't, that might interfere when we redo. Uh, well, well, we'll find out what happens. We'll just find out. Uh, or not Nginx, or the certbot stuff. Uh, so I'm going to... Give it a blog. I'm just going to say change its main domain to blog.lanchad.net. Put it in blog there. And I'm going to put the directory in blog right here. Um, now, I'm not quite sure if the, if we can just run certbot. Well, oh yeah, i got to link it. Uh, sites available. Blog to sites enabled. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to reload Nginx. Again, S stands for System CTL. Uh, okay, there's an error. Let's see. Oh, it's probably because I put all those... Yeah, it's because I... Shoot, hold on. I'm going to do this off... I'm going to delete some stuff off... Actually, no, I'll, I'll just do it on camera because why not? I don't know. Let me see my if my mic is actually working. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll do it on camera because, you know, why not? It's the end of the video. We already got through most of the content. Um, so we'll do more active troubleshooting. So the issue is, I'll tell you what the issue is uh, as I'm doing this. Um, yeah, it, when you use the certbot thing to uh, refresh certificates, things are going to be messed up if we don't have a certificate for if... Because the certificate that is in this file, uh, the blog file that we just copied over, that d does not have an entry for the actual blog subdomain. So that's why it's given an error. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to copy... Um, actually, no. Here's what I'm going to... Mm, well, no. We'll copy the default one to blog. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the default. Because I think at the bottom... Yes, at the bottom they just have... If you don't want to just delete all the comments or something like that, you can just do it this way. Okay, so now let's redo, uh, let's say server name, blog.landchad.net, www, blog.landchad.net, end it with a semicolon. Um, yeah, I always talk out all the things that I, this, I don't just do it for videos. I always talk out the things that I type. Um, and we're going to have our root as the var www blog. Okay, now, now we'll retry that. Now we should be able to, we didn't have an error that time. Now we should be able to do our certbot command again. Um, and you'll see that both the blogs are showing up. I'm just going to press enter to do, uh, get a certificate for everything. Say expand your old certificate. Basically, we already had a certificate for the main domain and the mail domain. Now we're expanding it to include that blog domain. Okay. Um, so that should take just one second. And it's going to ask us to redirect in just a moment. Yep. Redirect. So now let's, uh, we made the directory for that, uh, var www blog. Um, so I am going to you know, I'm sure there's someone who's upset at the fact that I'm doing all this as root. Because, um, well, okay. I'm not going to think about that. 
It wor Hey, I do it. Whatever. It works. Um, so this is a blog. This is the land chad blog test. So let's see if that actually is working. Where is it? Okay, blog land chad .net. Look at that, works perfectly. So that's how you set up a subdomain. You basically just make a new entry uh, and link it and restart it and you gotta you know watch out for the certificate errors and stuff. Um, and you can also, mind you, I did this, so I did that with the subdomain. Theoretically, of course, you can have multiple websites on the same server. There's no problem with that whatsoever. Okay, I do that in fact. My not uh, LukeSmith.xyz and uh, larbs.xyz and not related.xyz. I'm pretty sure I have them all on the same server. If you wanted to do that, hypothetically, let's go to the blog as an example. Sites available blog. If you wanted to do do that, wait, that is not. Uh, is that the one that I just was just whatever. Um, okay, I was confused for a minute. I just did something stupid where. Uh, I didn't notice it a minute ago. I made the default file, the one I was actually using for the blog, and I used the blog file that is retaining the stuff in the default file. It doesn't actually matter what they're named, but um, either way, I was going to say, um, so hypothetically, if, well, we can go back in that one. If you wanted to do something like have some other domain name, you can very easily, instead of having a server name that is like a subdomain, you could have like, uh, you know, let's say I have landchad.com as well, which is probably already I think that was already taken. I looked for that. Someone has that. I wonder what's there. Um, but yeah, you can do any kind of, it doesn't have to be a subdomain of your particular website. Um, but uh, yeah, you can do pretty much anything with Nginx and set up however many servers and stuff like that. All right, this has gone, gone on long enough. I did get a little rambly at the end, but that's setting up an email server and a web server and uh, now you're your own internet land chad um, in case you weren't already. So <laughs> see you guys next time.